story how we overcome for we'll understand it better by and by we are often destitute of the things that life demands want of food and want of shelter thirsty hills and barren lands but we're trusting in the lord and according to his word we will understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome, for we'll understand it better by and by. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he guides us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die, for we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome for we'll understand it better by and by temptations hidden snares often take us unaware and our hearts are made to bleed for many a thoughtless word or deed and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best but we'll understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of god are gathered home we will tell the story how we overcome for we'll understand it better by and by. Amen. It's number number six in this final one. Amen. Key C. There, there is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. first love me it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free it tells me of his precious blood the sinner's perfect plea and oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus oh how Because he first loved me, it tells me what 
what my father hath in store for me every day. And though I tread a darksome path, yield sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Because he first loved me. Amen. Brother Jonas, would you mind come helping us this afternoon? Take up tithes and offerings. Sing this little chorus. Key of C. Mm -hmm. C. Mm -hmm. It's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Demons will have to flee. When we come in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before in the precious name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. When we come in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before in the precious name of Jesus, we have the victory. Amen. How many glad you got the victory today? Amen. Thank the Lord. Well, today was supposed to be Sister Lily Black's day to sing, so we didn't, she's not here today, so, but we've got an excellent fill-in today, and so Brother Brandon has gracious accepted our invitation to come sing this afternoon, so we're just glad to have them, <laughs> Sister Sandra and the girls here with us today, so Brother Brandon's going to bless us with a song today, so God bless you, brother. Amen. I'm going to sing in the sweet by and by. It's number 53. It's a congregational song. Y'all can sing it with me. Our old uh, pastor and friend uh, used to sing this all the time in his church. He passed away this week, so I'm going to sing this uh, for him, okay? Yeah. I'm not sure about what key. Mm -hmm. 
I'll just go and you come in. Okay. Well, there's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in that sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore and we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more oh not a sigh for the blessing of rest yes in that sweet oh by and by yes we shall meet on that beautiful shore yes in that sweet oh by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore and to our bountiful father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days yes in that sweet oh by and by yes we shall meet on that beautiful shore yes in that sweet oh by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore yes in that sweet oh by and by yes we shall meet on that beautiful shore yes in that sweet oh by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore sing song where could I go but to the Lord Amen Living below in this old sinful world hardly a comfort can afford striving alone to face temptation so where could I go but to the Lord where could I go oh where could I go seeking a refuge for my soul Need soul 
needs manna from above. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. so dear comfort I get from God's own word yet when I face the chilling hand of death where could I go but to the Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, where could I go? Let's all stand. Oh, where could I go seeking a refuge for my soul needing a friend to help me in the end where could I go where could I You want me to come out? I'm doing this. He goes, <laughs> just twitch. Oh, I did. I said, oh, you said, well, you had to do it the second time I did. I did. You're right. So anyway, what we have here, it's a failure to communicate. So anyway, good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you back again. Let's give Brother Ryan another hand. Bless his heart. That boy come a long way from when we used to go to fellowship meetings. Lord, we'd have to slow down going up the mountains. He'd just about barf all over everybody. He's just a little kid, about, what, 18, 17, 18? He'd say, y'all going to have to slow down a little bit. We'd go to Brother Tom Crescenes, and he's... He turned green, purple, but you know what? He went. He went, he kept going, he went, and he kept going, and then, then he disappeared a little bit. He brought somebody back with him. Sister Gabby. Lord, I remember her giving her testimony there. I, what was it, 2006 or something like that at, at youth camp in Alabama? Wow. Whew. Time flies. My goodness. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see each one of you here. I, I guess I'm the only one that wanted to be here and one other person. That's all I heard. You going to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Would you rather be somewhere else? Go ahead. All right, let's turn our Bibles. To, okay, we'll get started now if y'all want to. 
This will be part 86. I think, Brother Joe, I've been looking. I We're going to have to look. I don't. He's behind him. He's behind a number, but it doesn't matter when you get up in these numbers. I mean, you know, what's one sermon? You know, they're all going to run in together. So let's remember Brother Darrell Ward to be here next Saturday, three o'clock. We'll have pizza for the kids. Uh, bring all your uh, young people and we'll have a good time. Only have one service on Sunday. Brother Darrell will be here also that day. Remember, Brother Bob and Brother Luis will be coming back tomorrow with their entourage. And Brother Michael's probably on the plane right now. All right, so they were taken to the airport not too long ago. Uh, February the 4th, we will have Bible study here at the church from 6 to 8 on this coming Saturday. No, the next Saturday. Sister Anna Kamani done got me all messed up. She said, you, she said, you need to tell them Wednesday is not next week. Well, to me, Wednesday is next week, but it ain't. It's, this is the first day of the week. So this coming Wednesday, you need to have yourself written down if you're going to come to the Valentine's banquet, not next Wednesday. She said, they'll tell you, you said next Wednesday. I said, okay, it's this Wednesday. January 25th will be the last day for sign up. Sign up sheet will disappear. Thank you for all signing up. That's a good crowd we got coming. So we appreciate that. And like I said, Brother Dutch Scott will be with us that weekend. He'll be speaking for a little while that night. We'll have a meal. And then on Sunday, we'll have one service on the... 12th just make sure you sign up we are uh collecting some babysitters um josh um there's some people going to be at my house um uh, deanna my daughter my daughter my granddaughter and um my grandson are going to be there and we'll be looking after a few and if you need somebody to keep your kid then that will be really close. I don't live a half, half a mile from the place, so we will. Uh, uh, and you got to you got to like a, a dog. If you don't like dogs, you better find something else because we got a dog, inside dog. And Riley's a little hyper, so just be careful with him, her. So remember that. So if you need somebody, let us know um, for a babysitter. We'd like all of you to come, and you know it's, it's a date night. Tonight, when you go with your sweetheart, and you don't have to worry about your kids. You don't have to worry about where they're at and what they're doing. And uh, they don't have to worry about you, where you're at, and what you're doing. You're going to be there at the Valentine's Banquet. And we'll have a good time. We're going to have some prizes and gifts, and we'll do the left-right game, and we're going to do the newlywed game. So we're going to have a good time. We'll get to know each other a little bit more. So, And then all the group from ohio they're coming too so we gotta pick them up on friday but we got all that pretty much handled so uh remember sister june a little bit more on her shoulders she got to go thursday for a follow-up and then um pray for me wednesday i had a um what was it a heart not a heart cast it was a sonogram on my heart what is it oh, thank you i had an ultrasound it's going to be a girl. That's what I, oh, sorry, never mind. That's what I asked that guy when I got done. I said, boy, a girl. He said, you having a girl? So I've got a girl heart. Oh, ain't that sweet? Oh, I got a heart for one girl. Amen. That's right. So just remember that I get my results on Wednesday and they're going to let me know. Uh, how that is i'm not having any issues it's just precautionary from all that that happened before so just keep me in prayer remember sister frida she's still hurting so just pray that the lord will take that away from her and comfort her and brother dale sister dale today also so remember all these requests um wednesday night i'll be speaking wednesday night yeah i'll be preaching wednesday. this coming wednesday night the 25th the day we take the list down. This week. Let's pray. Lord, I know sometimes we cut up and act up, Lord, but you one time you talked about Herod, the old fox. Brother Branham was um, cut up. I was watching last night the um, uh, where Sister Rebecca showed the slideshows of Brother Branham dancing and, and playing with the kids, and we're just human beings. And Lord, if we had to be so serious, I don't know what we'd do. 
But Lord, I believe we're going to, we're the, we should be the most happy people on the face of this earth. Every little thing, even through tragedy, even through pain, even through sorrow, we should lift our eyes up and say, thank you, Lord, for giving us health, for giving us life, for giving us breath. There's many people didn't make it to this day right now on the face of the earth. There were many people that did not make it to right now. Well, Lord, now that we're here, Father, I pray that you'd be with us, that you would give us strength, Lord, in this journey, be with the congregation of people, that you will bless them, Lord, as they congregate together under this roof. Father, I pray that you'll come among us in a special way, that you'll anoint the speaker, Lord, and anoint the hearer, Father. I pray that you would bless Brother Bob, and Brother Luis, and Sister Christine, and the kids, Lord, and Brother Michael on his way back. Thank you for getting Sister Nyla back, Lord, and I know there's going to be wonderful testimonies that we will, we will uh, let them do in a few weeks, Lord, when they get everything together. And thank you, Lord, for the effort that they put forth. They're going to be tired, and I know that because it's happened to me, Lord. So I pray that you give them supernatural strength, Lord, as they're coming home, that you'll bless them and be with them, give them a safe trip on their plane and on the journey there, Lord, and back to Atlanta and back home. And, Lord, we'll get to see them on Wednesday night. Father, we pray that you'd be with us, Lord. Take care of us. Lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. Be with the ones that are sick. Bless the ones, Lord, that are, that are sin sick, Lord. We, we still praying for those, Lord, that, that need to come in, Lord. We're one day closer to home. We're one day closer till this Gentile door is getting shut. And when it's shut, there's nothing else anybody can do. Father, we'll be in the ark, and you'll take us home. Lord, just forgive us of our sins and our thoughts that are contrary to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Son of man, part something. So we'll just say 86 at the moment. When you get up into those big numbers, it's okay. It just helps people track what sermon that you're on, so that's okay. Uh, I think Brother Donnie's on like 254, so, so, so 85. Oh, okay. So in the beginning was the Word. Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You may be seated. You know, there's nobody can say that but us. Do you, do you think for one moment that, that they beheld his glory as he was here on the face of the earth? He was a human being. He was, he, that he was a common man. A lot of people didn't even know who he was. Uh, the 12 that was with him still had questions in their mind. So we beheld his glory. We actually are the only people on the face of the earth that know his full glory. We're the only ones that know his full potential. We're the only ones that know his character to the degree of having that headstone come back into this church, into the people, and give us rapturing faith. That's what we're heading to. We're heading to rapturing faith. All right, so as we're heading to rapturing faith, then we got to get up there somewhere. We got to get there somewhere. Amen. Somehow, somewhere, we got to get there. <clears throat> and we're now looking at the word at knowledge. We see that knowledge is a two. It's a it's two uh, sides of the story. You got a tree of life. And you got the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We talked about this morning. Where is the tree of life? The tree of life is inside your soul. If you're born again today, you have the tree of life, and you're feeding from that. Brother Brown said, we're feeding now on the body word of the Son of Man, which why, that was word made flesh. He told him to eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's exactly what we're doing, but we know what we're doing. We know we're not eating the physical body, and we're not eating drinking the physical flesh. As a representation, next Sunday we'll be taking communion, and uh, that's what we'll be doing. But we'll know in our mind why we're doing it. We're taking the wine and we're taking the bread as a symbol and he said, do this until I come back. Amen. So we know one thing's for sure. We're going to keep doing it till he gets back. All right. We're going to do what the word says. We're going to do what it tells us to do in our communion. All right. And then Isaiah 53 says, by his knowledge. So we're not looking at our knowledge as we were talking about this morning. Our knowledge is over here. Our knowledge is like way over here. And his knowledge is like way over there. Because he said, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. He didn't say you might have one, two, or three little bitty ones. He said, no, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So we need to what? Keep our ways or take his? That's what I thought. 
We're going to take his way. Now look in John 8, verse, 30, verse 31, Jesus said, look, he said, those that believed on him, if you continue in my word, and that's what we're doing now, we're continuing in the word of God. It should be a continuous, as we were talking about this morning, a continuous revelation of the word of God. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? And you shall know the truth. Now, that word know comes from the word knowledge. Knowledge is to know, all right? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, there was a group of people, though, that was in the Bible that Jesus said, Jesus said, I, they'll come to me in that day and say, have I not cast out devils? Have I not done these mighty works? And we've done it in your name. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. Now, that word know and knew is used in the Jewish language is intimate relationship or where Adam knew Eve. In other words, making love. All right. That's what Jesus is telling. Him. He said, look, you might have known who I was intellectually, but you never had an experience with me to become my bride. You never were my bride. You, you, I give you a chance to be. And you did these mighty works, but you didn't go on down into that throne room and let me in. You were just anointed by a spirit. Let's please, let's don't be anointed by that kind of a spirit. Amen. Let us continue on. And as Brother Dale's always said, we need to every day say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Give me the Holy Ghost. If I don't have the Holy Ghost, please give me the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost, Lord. I, I want him. He's not going to get tired of that. You know what he's tired of? He's tired of the people who says, well, I got it. But I ain't got to do everything. You say, Lord, I'll just do this. Every once in a while, I'll get some of this out. Of, uh, you know, I'll pull a book out every once in a while, and I'll listen to a tape every once in a while. That's not what he wants. He wants us to be what? Be children. Be sons and daughters of God. Start that way. Start as a child. But I speak as a child, Paul said. But now what? I put away those childish things. Um It'd be kind of it'd be kind of awful for us to go to your house and go to Donnie's house and and look in the floor and there's there's Jonas be going, brother Donnie, what are you playing with Legos for? Brother Donnie, why you got Hot Wheel cars out on the? There ain't nothing wrong with Hot Wheel cars. But that but I used to do that, but that's been put away. That's those childish things to be put away. I want those Hot Wheel cars to be real big cars, and I won't have that 57 Chevrolet and that, all those different things, you know, that, that we get now. Well, as you get older, guess what? Same way in God. We do start by playing. You don't know what you're doing. We start by playing. Don't, yeah, don't have an idea what's going on. But as we get older and get older and get older, guess what? We start figuring life out just a little bit. That's the same way with God. If you'll just stay here, stay under the fountain, listen to the word of God, listen to the preachers, listen to your elders, and listen to Brother Branham on his tape, then guess what? Something good is going to happen. It's when we quit doing those things. It's when we quit and stop and leave church and nobody don't love me no more and nobody don't care about me. And, and you know, Brother Danny didn't shake my hand, didn't even look at me today. Sorry. It's all right with him. He knows it's all right with him. <clears throat> but that's the way we get. We get all these feelings involved. Right. Amen? That's why Satan went after Eve and not Adam. Right. Adam was the man. Adam had the not more intelligence than a woman, okay? Okay, sisters, y'all should have said amen and clapped. But <laughs> it wasn't that he was, she was, you know, less dumb. No, she had emotion and feelings, and Satan knew that. He could feel that, and he knew that if I can just get to her and get to her emotion, I'll turn her away. Right. Now, don't you think he's slick? He's slick now doing the same identical thing. If I can just get the, get, get the emotional part to override everything else, then I got him. That's what he did with the church. That's what he did at Nicaea. He took them, they went to Nicaea and took a false doctrine. The bride, Brother Ram said, went to Nicaea and tried their best to turn the people back. But it didn't happen. It wasn't time. It was time for this Joel 2.25, for the tree to be eaten down. The bride tree was eaten down almost to a stump. But, listen, I will restore. And that's God, not the man. I will restore to you the years, the locust eat, caterpillar, canker worm, pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. You know, today it's the darkest day, darkest hour that ever been. But you know, we can eat better than anybody ever. 
That's naturally and spiritually. We got restaurants everywhere. One more time, everywhere. Amen. Amen. And we can eat in plenty, but so do we have the word of God in our access. We got it in our hand. We got it in our watch now. We got it in our car. We've got it everywhere we need it. We've got access to the word of God. And what are we doing about it? We shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Isaiah 28 says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Me. That's a question. Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who's he talking to? He's talking to me. He might be talking to you, but he's talking to me. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, we come to a, a stage of where we come into adoption. Where we come to fullness. Where we come to where we eat meat instead of eating the carrion of the world and the junk that this world feeds us. Everybody with me? Amen. amen. You can amen anytime you want to. Really ain't going to bother me a bit. I want to read something that I got, that I had on this one that I had, didn't read this morning, talking about Revelation. And I want to read this right here real quick. I didn't get to it. Right here. We were talking about Revelation, and Brother Brown talks about needing Revelation more than anything else in the world. Watch him, continuation in Revelation of Jesus Christ. Brother Brown said, no man knows the things of God save the Spirit of God. And he to whom the Spirit of God reveals them we need to call on God for revelation more than anything else in the world we have accepted listen to this now he's not finished we have accepted the Bible we know it's true we have accepted the great truths of it absolutely but it still is not real to most people because the revelation by the spirit is not there I don't want us to be intellectual giants. I want us to be revelated giants. Because listen, you can quote all you want to. But when it's deep down inside and it comes from God, Satan has to back up. And you know what? Remember I wrote, read your quote several weeks ago? Satan is the biggest bluffer there is. So if you start bluffing him, he knows when you're bluffing. So he just goes... Pfft. But when he knows you're not bluffing, when he met Jesus Christ the three times after the wilderness journey, when, after uh, Jesus was in the wilderness and those three times he tempted him, he knew he was not talking to a normal person. All right? Why? He said, it is, and all he said was, it is written. He didn't jump up and down and shout and preach a 25 or 30 minute sermon. <clears throat> he said, it's written that you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. But look, it's still not real to most people because the revelation by the Spirit is not there. The Word has not been quickened. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that we have become the righteousness of God by our union with Jesus Christ. Did you get it? It says that we are the very righteousness of God himself. That's what I want us to get to know this year, please. You are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, by being in Christ, it says that he, Jesus, became sin for us. It does not say he became sinful, but became sin for us that our union with him, we might become the righteousness of God. If we accept the fact, look, and we must, that he literally became sin for us by his substitution for us, then we must also accept the fact that we are by our union with him have become the very righteousness of God. I want you to read this with me. Read it with me. To reject one is to reject the other. To accept the one is to accept the other. All right? That's your choice today. Now we know the Bible says that. It can't be denied. But the revelation of it is missing. Wow, that's a prophet back in 1961. But the revelation of it is missing. It is not real to the majority of God's children. Amen. He didn't say God's mature children. He didn't say God's adults. He said God's children. It is just a good verse in the Bible. But we need to have it made alive to us. That will take a revelation. To make it alive to us. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those, look, who by reason of use. 
The Bible says to what? Exercise your faith. Even those who by reason of use have their senses. Senses. Memory, reason, conscience, affection, imagination. Remember there's only two. There's only one or the other in your soul. So that's faith or doubt. All right. Who have reason, by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You say, oh, that was for a prophet. No, it's for you. It was a gift given to an age. That he could discern the thoughts and intents of your heart, bring you up in front of a group of people, and discern it and be 100% true. Now, that can still happen, but not in the magnitude that it happened back then. Because that was one gift to one generation. Everybody with me? But now I believe that since we have the word of God, because Brother Brown, you watch him. I don't want to see these people that, that want to do away with Brother Brown and think he was wrong. I mean, he stood there and he said, if God be God. If I've told you the truth tonight, let him come on the scene and vindicate it. And he did it every time. God didn't have to. He didn't have to vindicate non-word. He didn't have to vindicate somebody that was false. But he stood before hundreds of thousands of people. And he said, tonight, if I've told you the truth, he said, let God come on this platform and you'll see the glory of God. And God was there every single time. He never had a sermon. Please bring me one if he says, now I've been waiting on him for about five minutes. We're going to wait a few more minutes and see if he comes. Now I know that there's times that he did wait on God. Because God's sovereign. He can come whenever he wants to. Listen, we can't override the sovereignty of God. Whatever what that was, something had to get out of the way for him to come. But it wasn't because Brother Brown was preaching false doctrine. But he didn't wait 30 minutes and then 30 minutes later he's like, well, he's not, he's not coming tonight. <laughs> he must be somewhere else. He's probably over there or Roberts or somewhere. He's not coming tonight. He never said that. God has to honor his word. Take him at his word. Start speaking to yourself. Speak to your children. Speak to your wife. Everything you need. Speak to yourself for the new birth. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Jonas, yesterday, you and um, Thomas, where did y'all go? Went to Perry George. Why? So he can shoot archery. First time you've ever picked up a bow, right? Really? Oh, you practiced. Oh, man. How many times did you practice? Yeah, I know. If it was guns going off, we'd done arrested you. You go over to his house and it looks like Custer's last stand. But it's usually in the bullseye. Same way with, with Thomas. They shot well. Why? They practiced. Well, I don't know one thing. There was not one person down there. You'd ask it, there's about 800 people down there shooting archery. Not one of them walked up and said, I ain't never done this before. Hand me a bow. I wouldn't be in the same room with them because you know what they'd be doing. Why? They were unskillful in what they were sent to do. You and I cannot be unskillful in what God sent us to do. But we got to practice and practice and practice. Practice what, Jonas? Form. Practice your form every time. Your muscles have to be toned to do that job. Because it's a stick and a string and it's hard to shoot them things. I promise you, have done it before. But when you get everything down right, and you lock that baby in, you lock them back muscles, and you don't do this, your training will put that arrow right where it's at. Same thing with me and you. Our problem is, is we're unskillful. I'm, I'm me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to preach to me today. I'm unskillful because there's things that I want done in my life and things that I want done, not me personally, but I want God to do in my life that's not happening yet. Why? I haven't practiced enough to discern both good and evil. The word discern means to separate, make a distinction, discriminate to prefer. And remember, <clears throat> we're in this age of, of discrimination and all this stuff. Brother Brown told us that God was, he did discriminate. He said, these are my kids, these are not. He was a segregationist. He separated. Why? He discerned. Brother Brown's discernment was to what? It was to separate 
the good from the bad, the false from the true. Remember, there was people that came up in his early ministry and gave him those cards, and it was wrong. And they were trying to do that to trick him. Well, what did Brother Brown tell him? He said, look, there's nothing wrong with you. This is not, but now, since you've done this to the Holy Ghost, now you have those things that are on that card. You don't play with God. No. You don't play with that gift either. So to discern, so that discernment is for me and you both. It's to separate, make a distinction. We got to know what's right and what's wrong. We got to know whether we listen to false doctrine or whether we listen to true doctrine. And to do what? To take that and use it in our archery tournament or use it in our track of life or the things that we do and that we do for God. And, and like Brother Bob and Brother Luis, Brother Bob had never been over to another country before. I don't know if he's ever been out of two or three states before. Every time you see the pictures of him, he's like his wide eye, like a deer in a headline. He's having the time. But he's seeing things he probably has never seen before. Amen? But now, Luis, he's been there. He's been there two or three times. He's you know, part of the culture, you know, and he's, he's like just as comfortable as he can be. And Bob's like, why? He doesn't have discernment because he doesn't know what he's looking at yet. That's not to say anything against Bob. It's just his first time. But when he goes back again, he's going to be more calm. You know, I've been to Jamaica 11 times, and it doesn't bother me one bit. Go get on a plane, go to Jamaica, and I could probably drive. I'd have to remember to drive on the other side of the road. But it wouldn't bother me because I pretty much know the place. Why? I've been there. Amen. So I can separate the good from the bad. I can go to the right places. Well, that's the way God is with the Word. He tells you what to do, and we're supposed to do that. We're not supposed to. Well, you know, let's just live close enough to the world where they can't tell the difference. No, you need to live so far away from the world so they definitely can tell the difference. Amen? So that's discernment. And what is their discernment? Oh, y'all just get beat down. You just have to do this. I am so sorry. And I'm going to tell you something, to be really honest. Sisters with long hair like that, like June's got, God bless you. God bless you. Because I'm telling you, I'm, if ours is wrong, we go get it cut. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we got two or three, you know, every time June's got them flyers, you know, got them that stick out way out like this that you can't ever get back to the back. Right? right? But see, we don't have to do that. We just go in there and go, man, that's been there a while. You know, start cutting it off. But your sisters don't do that. To for the glory of the Lord, not because it makes you look good, bad, or indifferent. You do it for the glory of the Lord, Right? But it is a sacrifice. God bless you for that. I appreciate it. you washing your hair. You have to have to wash all that all that hair. Bless her heart. I sent her up to Jeannie's up to our girl at the at the beauty shop, and she washed her hair for her because I don't know if I could do that or not. That's just a lot to have to wash. That's a lot of hair. But you know what? That's your example. That's your example to the world. You can't preach. Come on. But you can show the world that it can be done, what the Bible says. And you know what? It not be done begrudgingly, but be doing it for the glory of God and doing it because you you don't feel you have to. Everybody thinks, you know, well, y'all are so depressed and so suppressed and all that. We're the most free people on the face of the earth. We do it because we want to, not because we have to. Come on. And I pray to you that your love may abound yet more and more in what? Knowledge and in all judgment. We have been given this knowledge right down here at the bottom of the pyramid to judge. Because I'll promise you, when you get temperance and patience, you're going to have to know what you're doing. Somebody say amen. Because that's going to be the rough one for all of us. But now there's a group that has a form of godliness. I'll get back to my other sermon in a minute. I didn't finish this this morning. Some have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. He said, from such, turn away. In other words, go in another direction. For of this sort of they which creep into houses and lead captive silly churches. Women are churches in the Bible. Laden with sins, led away with many lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. God, don't ever let me get in that place. Don't ever let me get into that spot. Hebrews 10, verse 23. So let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Look, without wavering. So what if the storms of life hit you right between the eyes? If you're a child of God, 
It's got to be for your help. God's not going to put something on you that you can't handle. You just don't know whether you can handle it yet or not. And let us consider one another to provoke, to provoke under love and good words, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Who put that in there? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as we see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, look at that scripture right after that. If we sin willfully, after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for that sin. And I'm not going to read you the rest of it because it's pretty horrible. So let's get out of that one. Let's go up here to the, get back on my sermon here. <clears throat> Everybody all right? Say amen. amen. <clears throat> so here we go. I love that little thing that says, welcome back. Knowledge. 2 Peter 1 verse 5. Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Knowledge is no cease, which is science. Science is good if it's right. Listen, God's the greatest scientist there ever was. The greatest. He's the most perfect scientist. He can answer every question. There's not a... Uh, when you say that, Aaron, when you can't come to, it's like you can't have a whole number. It's like point three 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 three, and it continues. Isn't there a there's a there's a there's a theory or some kind of a something that I can't remember. Been a long time ago, but it never comes to a straight number. It just keeps going like threes and twos and ones, and you can't ever get the exact definite number. Well, in God, that don't happen. Wait. Yes, thank you. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on. Why? There's no end to it. We haven't figured it out yet. God doesn't do that. God's yeses are yes, and his noes are no. Knowledge signifies in general intelligence, understanding, the general knowledge of Christian religion, the deeper, more perfect, and enlarged knowledge of this religion. That's what I want. I want God to make us deeper in the word of God, because you know why? It makes your life a whole lot better. It make mine and your life a whole lot better if we dig deeper and get the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of the world. Right. Such as belongs to the more advanced, especially of things lawful and unlawful for Christians. See, that's coming from, this is coming from, from, the, um, from the Greek. Now, why does the denominations not see that? Why does the people that are tricked into believing these doctrines that are not true? Because look, it says, especially of those things lawful and unlawful for a Christian. It's unlawful for you to cut your hair, sisters. It's not just a, a, a well, maybe. No, it's in the Bible. Such as belongs to the more advanced, especially of things lawful and unlawful for Christians. Moral wisdom, such as in seen and right as seen in right living. Now, see, we shouldn't have to teach that. We shouldn't have to teach right living. But we do for the babies. You have to remind a baby a hundred times. You ought not have to remind an adult a hundred times. Everybody with me? So make sure you sign up that sheet down there before Wednesday. You make my mama mad. Genesis 2, verse 9. Listen, we're out of the same mold, so if it's, I'm the same way. Amen, my wife said. That's all right. Out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree. And what are we feeding off? Let's get back on our subject. The tree of life in the midst of your garden is what we're eating off of. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil is that next realm of memory, reason, conscious affection that we were looking at this morning. Because look, see, you can have a knowledge of good and evil. Listen to me. You can have a knowledge of good and evil in your spirit. You can't in your soul. It's either good or evil. But you can have a knowledge of good and evil in your memory, reason, conscious affection, imagination, because Satan plays in that realm, and God is in that realm. Everybody with me on that? The knowledge of good and evil. You wrote in on that today. You wrote in on the tree of knowledge of good and evil today. Because some people literally wrote in, in their horse, on their horse, several hundred years ago. You know, it hadn't been long. It hadn't been about a hundred and something years since the, the motor was created. And then it was just a little 
it'll, be, it'll get you 20 miles an hour, maybe something like that. But look at it now. We've come to where uh, we got, well, our airplanes run six, 700 miles an hour. We broke sound barrier and just keep on going. 1,500 miles an hour, 2,000. Well, guess what? That's the way it should be in the Word of God. Then you remember, he sent us out, sent them out of the garden. Listen, we went out with Adam and Eve. We didn't stay in the garden. We went out with Adam and Eve. Because we can't get back in the garden yet. We're getting, we're heading back to the garden. But we came out with Adam and Eve. Brother Adam said that was our, that was our father and mother. We were born between Satan and Eve. Well, you can get quiet on me. It's okay. I know it's afternoon. I know we ate something and it's a little bit sweaty, but... <clears throat> I'm going to anyway. Doesn't matter if you sit there and look at, stare at me like I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy, so don't stare at me like that. You're wasting your time. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden they may, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day you eat that tree, you're going to surely die. And Eve did. And then Adam did. And then we died. And that part we're still eating off of to this day. But you know what's going to happen when we talk about you go to the invisible union? Brother Brown says the second Eve, talking about what? Then you take Christ the mystery God revealed, the, the threefold purpose of Christ the mystery, what? All things in Christ, all things in the church, take us back to the Garden of Eden. But we got to have all things in Christ and then hurt us first before he takes us back to the Garden of Eden. He is going to take us back to the Garden of Eden, whether we want... Whether the world says, no, nah, they ain't never going to be Eden. Yes, there will be an Eden. Yes, there'll be a time. Even in the millennium, there's going to be a time that me and you are not going to have to worry about a car, worry about a credit card, worry about a bill. Somebody say amen. Good grief, that ought to make you happy. Travel like a thought. Eat what we want to, not we have to, what we have to. Well, maybe you'll get a revelation one of these days. But remember, the church left their first love. That's why, that's why we're having to start down here again. Because we left our first love. Look, they had these virtues. Bro, right, Joe, they had them working in the first church. Second church and a little bit in the third church. What? Eat it down. Man's idea is eat that thing down to here again. That's why he had to restore. I will restore, saith the Lord. Because look, the first three church ages, Brother Brown said they had the pure word of God. No denominations. Sure, the ideas were coming in. Because he said, he said, there's Nicolaitanism. It's coming in right now. But it was in baby form. Baby form. Remember from where you've fallen. And we did. We, we had a prophet to tell us where we left, where the church got off, and where to come back to. We know that now. The Baptists don't know that. They think they're still on the right track. Methodists, we're on the right track. Some of them might be on their right track. But I tell you before, like I said again, there's brides, brides, churches, brides, but there's going to come one. There's one church, one bride that's going to be without spot or wrinkle. And we're going to take a body change. I just contend it's us. Remember where you fall. Repent. Do the first words. Or else I'll come and take your candlestick out of its place. In other words, I'm going to take your fire out because you're not using it. I'm going to take your light out because you're not using it. Except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. What is Nicolaitanism? What? Conquering the laity. If Satan can get you guys... He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church and him that overcometh. Well, I give to eat of the tree of life. Now we're back eating the tree of life. If you're born again today, you are eating off the tree of life. Amen. All right? Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And right here is the paradise of God. God does not mind. He knows where the new city is going to be. He knows what it's going to look like. He knows how square miles. He didn't. He, Brother Branham got that by revelation, but God didn't get it by revelation. He knew it was going to be 1,500 miles square, and that only the bride was going to live there. But we didn't know that. There ain't a world, nobody out there in the world knows that we're going to live in a 1,500 square mile city, just the bride. Just the bride and 144,000. 
But we do know that. We know God's give us a place. But you know what? The paradise of God's inside of you by the new birth. You have a peace and a part of that city inside you today. And that's that desire. You're going to see it come down out of heaven. You did when you got born again. But remember, we're going to go over in another dimension. God's going to destroy this thing. And he's going to bring that city that was built by your desire. Amen. What does knowledge mean? The fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity. I got it right. Gain through experience or association. Acquaintance, acquaintance with or understanding of a science, art, or a technique. The fact of condition of being aware of something. Listen, we can't go through this world and not be aware. If you've come under this mess of the hour, you ought to know that and be aware that you are a special people. That you are the chosen. Some choose to be the chosen frozen, but that's okay. One day God's going to put a fire under you. And you'll find out there's nothing in this world that you need besides God. The circumstance or condition of apprehending truth. What do you do? What does apprehend mean? When somebody steals something or you you chasing some robbers, what do you do when you, you catch them? You apprehend them. You go catch them and you bring them back. And that's what we're doing with these. These look, folks, this has all been lost. The virtues have been lost down through the ages. They've just been scattered everywhere. Thank God it took a master builder. It took Zerubbabel. It took Zerubbabel to bring it back. Put it back together. Build it back up. Through a little prophet of Malachi 4. He even told him how to draw this drawing. Nobody had ever put the pyramid with the, with the uh, statue of perfect man. Except one. And that's good enough for me because you know what? It fits. It fits. If you continue my words, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now listen, we can't know the truth and it bind us. You can't. It's not the right truth. If you've got something that's binding you, it's not the truth. Because the truth is going to set you free. That jubilee year. When they got to that place and they realized it was the 50th year and they realized, I don't care how much debt I incurred. I don't care how much I, I my house needs this and the gutters and shutters and all that stuff. I'm going free. Amen. God, give me a place over there, not here. Right. Come on, people. God, give us a place over there, not here. We know it's going to be here, but we got to go over here and let him clean this off. Then we're going to come back. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> That word know is to perceive, understand, get a knowledge of perceive or feel. Understand, perceive, have a knowledge of, to understand. Look, it's a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. Adam knew his wife Eve, all right? <clears throat> Look at this. To become with, acquainted with, to know. To the Greeks, this meant to know facts. But these facts may or not affect one's conduct. To the Jews, true knowledge always manifested itself in one's conduct. Isn't that what that is? It always manifests itself in one's conduct. If you got a problem with your temper, I'll promise you, God is going to make sure you know whether you got left, it left you or not. I used to say, no, that's the devil. No, that's God. If you're a child of God, it's God guiding this because what did Brother Bram say? He said he turned the devil loose on you. If you consider my servant Job, Job was a wonderful guy. He was just having a party. He was great. Devil didn't even notice him. Lord said, if you consider this guy right here, where you been, Satan? Be walking up down the earth. In other words, there was millions of people on the earth, and he just, he just tormenting every one of them. And here's Job over here somewhere in the corner, and nobody's bothered him. Nobody's seen him. He's got all the cattle he can, he can feed, and he's got all the kids, and he's got houses, and he's got property, and he's got everything. And he said, hey, devil, have you, have you checked this guy out yet? God did that. You know why? Because he knew what Job would do. Job didn't know what Job would do. You, God knew and knows what you'll do, but you don't know. And see, to me, that's a revelation because it'll, it'll help me understand where I'm at. 
Our trials, our test is, like I said, is for a testimony. But these facts are may, may or may not affect one's conduct. To the Jews, true knowledge always manifested itself in one's conduct. One did not know something until that fact had a particular outworking in his life. Well, that just sounds exactly what these virtues are. It's an outworking in your life, and sometimes you don't know you got it until you go through a test, and then you figure out, yes, I do, or no, I don't. Amen. All right? <laughs> Proverbs 3, verse 13 says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and gold. She, see, it all, that all turns into a she now. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. You know what? People ought to be happy to be around you. People ought to be happy to be around you. Sit there and think about that for about 10 seconds and figure out if that's what's happening in your life or people can't stand to be around you one of the two. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. You say judgment? Yes, that knowledge right there. Watch this, 1 Corinthians. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Dare any of you, Paul said. Paul's in Corinth. Right, we got all these Corinthians that are babies and they're, some of them are still idol worshipers and some of them still party and some of them still drink at the Lord's table and some of them are just newborn babes and Paul's got to treat them like babies. He said, why do y'all take each other to court? To go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? World? Now angels. They were created before you got here. And we're still going to judge them. Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. You know what Paul's saying? He said, don't take him to the smart guy. Take him to the one that's least esteemed. Because if he's got the Holy Ghost, he does have some discernment. Now the problem is, and, and I want to explain something real quick, because <clears throat> don't let people run over you in life. This is talking about a brother, me and Donnie, taking each other to court. You should not do that. Number one, you save a lot on lawyer fees. <clears throat> yeah, say amen again. Yeah. But we should be able to bring it here and judge it right here. Now, not judge among everybody. There's some private things, but get the saints to get the, the elders together and the pastor and the assistant pastor and the, and the deacons and the elders, and we're going to sit down and talk this thing out. But now, if Donnie was in... In business with an unbeliever, you can't do nothing about the unbeliever. You be the Christian. Yes. Amen. Right. But he's unjust. You see where it says right here? Right here. There you any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. In other words, why are you taking it to somebody that's unjust, not a Christian, and why are you letting them make, you, make your judgment? Mm -mm, no, it should be done here. That would be a brother and a brother together. If you have a problem, it needs to be handled here. Now, if it's out in the world, you can't do what they, they don't even think like we do. Amen? They don't. We've handled them before. They want to take you to court for everything. We should be able to judge it right here. Well, get quiet if you want to. That's okay. <clears throat> Thirdly, you add knowledge. Knowledge. Now, that don't mean worldly knowledge because that's foolishness to God. But knowledge to judge. Judge what? Right from wrong. How do you judge it then if you've got Christian knowledge with your virtue and faith? You judge 
whether the word is right or wrong. And if you can lay aside all your creeds and all your unbelief, everything you claim you have done, <laughs> then you have knowledge to believe that God cannot lie. Let every man's word be a lie, but mine be true. Now you're getting knowledge, that supreme knowledge. You don't have to have four degrees in some college or something like that to have it. Because all these virtues are given to you by God to place upon the foundation of your faith that you might come to the full stature of a real living man of God. Yes, sir. But when you can see that the scripture is not contradictory, that you can say that and can see that by the revelation of God, the whole word, word is wrote in mysteries. Somebody asked the other day, we were talking about something. Why did Moses, he wrote Genesis. He actually saw what happened between Adam and Eve, and he wrote fruit. Trees and fruit. To hide it. To hide it from us. To make it a mystery to the unlearned. Remember, God wants to tell us his secrets, not the world. Because if they become like us and become in the family of God, they'll understand it just like we do. Everybody with me? Why did Moses do that? Moses saw what happened. He called it fruit. Don't eat of that. Eat of this. They did this. They did that. He watched the whole thing. He didn't just write it down by, you know, God just wrote letters up in the sky. No, I believe he saw, I believe he saw the whole soon as the creation. And he just started writing what the creation was looking like through a television. That's just the way I see it. But folks, man didn't see it that way. They think Eve ate an apple that caused all these problems that we have. But it was hidden. But you can take, then you take the whole Bible. The Bible talks about being the fruit of your mother's womb and about being the fruit of your mother and about being this and being a fruit and being, being all this and eating of this and eating of that. If you put all that together, you know exactly what happened in the garden. <clears throat> then when you get and say, punctuate every word of God with an amen, then add that to your faith. Then the statue of perfect man I read you this morning. The prayer was, build me up, Lord, into this. Let Christ be my head that works through me. On my foundation, my faith is in him. Let virtue and all his temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness work in me, O Lord, is my prayer. I don't care, live or die, sink or drown. Denomination, no denomination. Friend or no friend. Can we say that? Can we say that? Lord, work in me whether I don't care who. The world's going to call us crazy anyway. Because we don't even think the way they think. <clears throat> let that work in me. Let Christ's virtue, his knowledge flow out. That not be able to teach those. Let's continue on to the 70 weeks. So Daniel, Brother Ram talks about a spirit coming in the church. There's a spirit of wisdom comes into the church to make known to the church by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Bringing the church in and revealing what day we're living in. Just the same as Gabriel come to Daniel, the Holy Spirit comes to the church in the last days to reveal these great, deep, secret things. Do you understand now? Oh, that's too deep for me. You haven't studied enough. You haven't listened to enough tapes. You haven't read enough books. You haven't listened to enough sermons. Because somewhere in that, if you're a child of God, he's obligated to put that there in front of you for you to make a choice with. He's obligated. He has to, He wants to. He doesn't want to. As the Bible says, you, 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 your son starts crying for bread and he's hungry and he can't eat and you give him a rock. He's hungry and you give him a scorpion? That's not our God. He gives us the best. We got the best preachers, the best deacons, the best. Everything we got is the best. Amen. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Who's you talking about? Jesus Christ. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of what? Counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Every bit of that is in Jesus Christ. Now every bit of that has been transferred into me and you. Every bit of that. Ephesians 1.17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance 
in the saints. Hebrews 5.13, we read this a few minutes ago, but we'll read it again. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful. Now, it didn't say if you used milk, you were wrong. And that you denied the word. No, it just says you were unskillful in handling the word of God. For he is a babe, but strong meat belong to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We read what discern means to separate, make a distinction, discriminate, to prefer. So I said about Brother Brown standing there and night after night, he's sitting there and so vivid, he'd tell you your house number. He'd tell you they got bushes in front of your house. He said your, your house number's on your door. Now, why didn't he just say your house number's? 214. He said it's on your door and your door is green. And you live on so and so street. And you had you saw a doctor yesterday and he had a blue coat. Why did he say that? He wanted to make sure. God wanted to make sure that we knew that that man was not a hoax. That he was literally seeing what was going on. And listen, if you see what's going on, you're an eyewitness. Timothy says, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort of lay which creep into houses are lead captive, silly women or silly churches, laden with sins, led away with many lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're learning over here, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. You know why? Because most don't want the truth. The truth hurts. The truth's hard to handle. Amen. If it was really easy, everybody would live this Bible and it wouldn't have no problems at all. Right. Every person would live this right here and it'd be no problem at all. Amen. It ain't easy. It's hard. You know why it's hard? Because you fight you. Right. You don't fight me. You don't fight Donnie. Right. You fight you. Right. Hebrews 10 verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Look, without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Who put that in there again? As a manner of some, but exhorting one another. Look, exhorting one another. Amen. And so much more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, if we do this, we do this willfully now, folks, there's no sacrifice for that. And there's the words that we're going to stop. We'll stop right here. Musicians, come on. <clears throat> the word knowledge, the word wisdom, spirit of wisdom, and to discern. All that is in what we just spoke about. Now, we're going to talk about uh, Wednesday night. We're going to talk about the wise and the unwise virgin. And we'll talk about being known. And a little bit more about judging. But those are the things, those are the words that go with that knowledge. We must have Holy Ghost knowledge to go to temperance to go to patience, to go to not godliness. But the spirit of wisdom, I pray that this year the spirit of wisdom will come into this church more and more. Wisdom to discern, wisdom to do the right thing, wisdom for all of us to do the right thing, wisdom for us to get in our position, know what we're supposed to do, and do it. All right? And not be tossed about with every wind of doctrine. We, we, we shouldn't, that, that should be one of those things that we move over to the side. We don't have false doctrine here, I don't believe. I don't believe. I'm telling you, I don't believe. You might believe it, but I don't believe we have false doctrine. Right. Okay? If we don't have false doctrine, then take that and put it over to the side. Amen. Put that over to the side. We've, 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 we've won that war. Right. We've won that battle. In other words, not war. We won that battle. That battle's won. Let's work on something else. Let's start sharpening. Let's stand to our feet. Let's start sharpening our sword. And whatever the devil's got for us this year, hack him. What brother Ernie say? Hack him. Smack him. Cut him. And if he knocks our teeth out, we gum him to death. What else? What else does he say? I, I, I miss brother Ernie. I do too. I miss him a lot. I was looking online last night, and they have that memorial service for him, and I thought, man, he's just gone. He's gone. But you know what? He went when God knew he was going to go. That's right. He meant when God was finished with that man, he was done with him. Because I believe that man was a man of God. I believe he led many people to the Lord. Amen. I believe by his testimony, he led a lot of, listen to me, he led a lot of intellectual people. 
that maybe we couldn't have got to. Him doing those seminars for the, you know, the other, for people, you know, like in sales and all that. He was able to touch their heart where we wouldn't be able to touch it. I believe every ministry has a, has a part to play that nobody else can play that part. You've got a part that you can deal with this certain thing. And then the other minister comes in, he deals with this certain thing. May preach the same sermon. Amen. It's just a little way that you bring it. Mm-hmm. It goes over into this angle so it'll help you. And it goes over to this angle so it can help the other person. Because God's obligated to what? His word. He's not obligated to me and you. He's obligated to his word. His word will set you free. This world will bind you. This world will smack you and hack you if you let it. But I don't want to be the hunted. Let's go hunting. We don't have to hunt the truth. The truth's here. We can hunt souls and we can hunt a better way to live. A better way to act. A better way to show people around you God. That's, right. That's my prayer for this year. Yeah. Help me, Lord. Like I said before, no New Year's resolution. We're going to get New Year's revelation. Amen. I just read you, Brother Brown said, there's no prevailing power. What is prevailing? That means it goes over every other power. Right. There's no prevailing power except for revelation. Then you need to pray for revelation, the prophet said. Above anything, pray for revelation. God, I need a revelation. Because, you know, you can put things that you can say, God, all right, I know what the Godhead is now. I don't have to have that preached to me every service, okay? Really, come on, we got to move. We got to move on. Some do need that, but some don't. I know water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't have to have that preached to me every sermon, but some does. But let's move on a little bit higher. Let's go on a little bit further. Let's have a knowledge of the truth, not a knowledge of the world out there. Let's have a knowledge of the truth. Let's sing a song. Sing higher ground. Mm -hmm. I'm resting on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bow. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. It's a higher plane than I have found. My feet on higher ground My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these what? Abide. Doubts and fears. Somebody's going to be there. My no, my prayer, prayer my aim is higher is ground. Higher Get me out of this junk that I'm in. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand by faith on heaven, the table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam. Of glory bright, but still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane. Then I Feet on higher ground. Is that your desire? I mean, what are we here for? Amen. If this is nothing, then we need to just eat, drink, and be merry. The Bible said tomorrow we'll die. And we'll die spiritually if we don't keep pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. 
New heights I'm gaining. Are you a better Christian this year than you was last year? If you're not, time to start. Amen. Time to start. Good time to start right now. Right. Let it all out. Get rid of all that stuff. And Sister Shepherd, you know, she was wondering if she had the Holy Ghost. Well, you know what? She did not only get the prophet to tell her she had the Holy Ghost. He told her where she was at in the pyramid. Right. Right. She, was walk she was right there at the bottom. But all that junk was flowing out of the box. All that trash. He was telling her, you're growing, sister. You're growing in grace and knowledge. You're getting rid of the sticks. Amen. Can we not do that? You say, well, my stick's not very big. Well, it can turn into a log. And you know what? If you get several thousand sticks in a hole, guess what it's going to do? It's going to clog it up. I had one on my route the other day that it wasn't very many, but buddy, that, that hole was about that big around. And when we all let rain, it just, it just put a solid wall and it was up over the road. Somebody had to come clean it out. Let's let God take and clean that thing out so that God can flow through this congregation and flow through the word of God into me and you. Is that your desire? Amen. That's my desire. Please, we're not going to leave anybody behind. We're going to go as fast as we can go, as hard as we can go. If you have trials and tribulations, that's all right. We're right there with you to stand with you. We're not going to get rid of you. I, I don't want to throw anybody out. I'd rather pull them in the boat, hadn't you? Right. I'd rather pull them in. But let's pray for the ones that are not here. <clears throat> and they'll be back Wednesday night. We'll get everybody back. You know, be here next weekend. Pray for Brother Darrell Ward that he will, um, wonderful brother, um, probably one of the most humble brothers that I've ever met in my life. And, um, and he's good. He, he'll be good for the youth, and he'll be also be good for us. And then remember, too, just we got February. Uh, we got Brother Tim Cross will be here the end of February because I'm doing the wedding in Ohio, so me and June will be gone that weekend. Brother Tim Cross will be here with you, all right? And then you'll hear a cross preacher. And then in March, we come back to the um, youth meeting, and Brother Jack Duff will be here with us. So I've already called Brother Jack. He hasn't been here in... I don't think he's ever been here. We've been down his place one time several, several years ago. Him and Brother Willie Smiley. And uh, we sure appreciate Brother Jack. He's a, he's a good brother in the Lord. And then that'll be March. And then May, I think we've got the Bullivan kid again. we got William here. And he's going to bring the baby with him. And, and we'll get to see it. But uh, that's what we got coming up. And we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for all the things you've done for us. Like I said, uh, this coming February is going to be really good. Um, start off with that Valentine's banquet. So um, please, if you can come, come. I hate it. I hate it that, that our sisters that, that are not, don't have their husbands with it, you can't come. But you got to stop somewhere. Someone asked me. <laughs> she said, well, I'm married to Jesus. I said, if you can bring him with you in flesh, come on. <laughs> Now, praise the Lord. I mean, uh, why not? But no, we can't. No, we, no, it's got to be a natural, natural husband and wife. But we love you all. Man, I tell you, uh, this past week's been a struggle. But uh, we're going to, and it's not been a struggle because I've had to take care of June. I know what y'all were thinking. I know y'all thinking that. I discern that because the women are rolling their eyes, you know. No, it's not because of her. No. But, but but we did say, you know, the we, we, we talk about our vows. Some of you that forgot your vows, it says better or worse. Sickness and in health. Richer or poor. Richer or poor. Right? That's what you said and you promised before God to do with your spouse. Richer or poor. Sickness and health. Till death do us part. Wow. A lot of people break that vow. You know, there's a lot of people standing at a pulpit and they'll say that and it won't be long before they break those vows. Right. You know what? That vow, Brother Brown, what did he say? He said, the, he said, the man, he said, not, uh-uh, your vow is what marries you to that woman. Right. Your vow to say, I'll take you. It's going to be really good at about 18 to 20 years old. Not a problem. But when you get 65 and 70, it's going to test that vow that you made several years ago. But you know what? There's no better thing than that right there other than the salvation is to have a wonderful wife and a wonderful husband. And we appreciate that. It was God did it, folks. I'll promise you that. Yeah, wasn't me. Wasn't my, wasn't my good sense to do that. Don't you smile. 
You know, you need to get a little bit taller. If you're going to be the same as your brother back there, you got to wear you some like, well, they don't make 12 inch shoes. I don't think. Cause you need to be up here and talking instead of be down here like this. We can get you that little booster seat to stand over there. But why did they both wear blue shirts too? Anyway, he just didn't wear a tie. Hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Blame my wife. <laughs> but again, just remember brother Ryan and, uh, sister Gabby's taking over for, for Anna's class. And, and we've, uh, we got Ryan up here doing, opening the service, and we sure appreciate each one of you that does everything you do for us. We appreciate it. And if we don't tell you now, remind us. We'll tell you. Because we do. Without this, without all y'all, this place doesn't run. People, like like you said, in the media room back there, man, they are they're going all the time. All right? Just to get this word out all over the world. Um. There's no telling how many countries and how many people we affect. But you know what? God's going God's gonna to let us know. I believe, Brother Joe, I believe he'll set us down and he'll say, you helped that one. If it hadn't been for you. Because what did they tell Brother Brown when he went across the curtain at the time? He said, if, they said, if you had not come, if you had not come, we wouldn't be here. Boy, wow. Same way here. Somebody will say, hey, how many times have we seen people said we got saved or, or, or we, you know, had a doctrine um, figured out and, and everything by listening to your ministry. Uh, thank God that, that, you know, there was one time that Brother Dale didn't even want to, um, I was thinking about this yesterday, we were talking about Ryan, and there was one time Daddy said, nope, we ain't having no drums. That's right. You remember that? Nope, we ain't having no drums. Nope, nope. Can we have, nope. Ryan, Ryan, can we get Ryan to play the, just for the bongos? Just play the bongo drum. Okay, all right. You open that door for us, and we appreciate that. You play for the glory of the Lord. You don't play with your, you know, you don't f flip your, <laughs> you know, do like a rock, you know, a rock band or something. I don't know how that works. Y'all just want to tell me how that works, but how you flip those things, you know, and play, you do good for the glory of the Lord, and it's not over. And we have Brother Gary Atkins here. He did the same thing. They played just so wonderful, and we appreciate that. We appreciate you. Appreciate the stand, you know, keeping your household and uh, with four girls. Just saying. <clears throat> anyway, but we love you, man. We appreciate you. Amen. You've uh, you've been you've been one of the most faithful people in this church, Amen. and we appreciate that. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, that's what happens to you. Right. If you want to know what happens, you get the Holy Ghost. Look at that man right there. That's right. And his wife, and the family. You know what he done? I'm just going to say it. He started right. If you start wrong, it's hard to make it back up. Amen. Hard to make it back up. But when you start right, you pray. God, give me. You've heard their testimony. God, give me a good spirit-filled lady. Give me a good spirit-filled uh, wife. And then they converse with each other and they love each other and they they talk about the Lord together, and they sit down and have Bible study and all these different things. I, I'm ashamed. I don't do all that. Means you don't do that that much. But thank you for being an example. Amen. Even to the younger ones, and 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 hey, a rebuke to us older ones. Hello, somebody. Amen. But yeah, we appreciate that, and we thank you very much. Wonderful choice. We appreciate all of you, all the ministers and everybody else. So, all minds clear. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you for the day you've given us. We appreciate truly Holy Ghost filled people to surround us. As you said, there would be a pillar of fire. Well, where is that pillar of fire? Sometimes we want to see that pillar of fire like on a wall or, or on the ceiling or floating through the room. Father, I pray that we see the pillar of fire in each one of us. I pray that we show that pillar of fire to the world and that they know we're different. And Satan, you know one thing's for sure. You can't have our soul if we're born again. You can't even touch it. It's a 10 million volt that you can might try to touch, but you'll never, ever put the fire of God out. Never will Satan defeat us. Even though we may go down with this body in a grave, our soul will be preserved in that sixth dimension. 
waiting for a time for us to come to the resurrection. Pick that same body up. Look at the devil and say, boo. You may have destroyed it, but you're not going to ever destroy it again. You may have tormented us, but you'll never torment us again. You may give us sickness, but you'll never give us sickness again. Never for an eternity. Lord, we thank you for that. We praise your great name for the people that are here, Lord. The ones, Lord, that are sick. Lord, we pray that you would raise them up for your honor and glory, Lord. Come back together with us on Wednesday. Bring Brother Luis and, and his family and Brother Bob and, <clears throat> and Brother um, Michael. And thank you for getting Sister Nyla home, Lord. It, it feels bad when everybody's not here, Lord. But we want everybody to be here, Father, and be healthy and be full of the Holy Ghost and willing to listen and help in the church. Thank you for the musicians that you give us, Lord. Thank you for the ones uh, leading singing, Lord, in Sunday school classes, uh, deacons, elders, trustees, board of directors. Lord, I pray that you'd just be with each one. Lord, may we show more of you this year than we've ever shown before. And, Father, that will be to get a revelation of who you are. And the revelation of who you are shows who we are. Because the prophet of God came to this earth and told us that we are you. She is him. We thank you for that, Lord. We ask you to sanctify us on the journey home. Forgive us of our sins and be with us, Lord, as we travel and work and do the things we have to do next week. They will come back together on Wednesday night to serve you, Father. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Savior and God, let me never